Welcome to Helsingborg! We have arrived in Sweden. Really beautiful little downtown they got going here. All right, well, I just checked in to my room here at the Best Western Hotel Linea. Cute little room. It's not big, but it does have some coffee facilities. So that's always nice because I can make a French press. The bed looks comfortable. She upgraded me to a double because I was originally booked into a single. But this is pretty decent for 75 Canadian dollars. And it includes a lavish breakfast buffet, which I saw photos of online. They even gave me a little welcome gift as a Best Western Rewards member and the bathroom. This might be the only downside. It's kind of a small cruise ship like bathroom. But other than that, beautiful. This place has got a lot of character. Well, good morning from Helsingborg, Sweden. So despite it being quite a dreary day today, there are some cool sights here in Helsingborg. This is the city's Rathaus or town hall, which you can see has these lovely red brick turrets and a clock tower there. And this is Stortorget, which is one of the major plazas and boulevards running through the heart of Helsingborg. And right at the end here are the terraced steps, which lead up to the Karnan, which is the fortress that overlooks the city. The last remaining vestiges of the fortress that existed here and protected the entrance to the Orisund about a thousand years ago. So I'm gonna go get a closer look and uh, also climb up those terraced steps that you see there in the distance. There's not a ton to do in Helsingborg, but pleasant enough city for sure. So they do have this huge relief map model showing Helsingborg in the year 1400. So you can see here what it would have looked like with the Karnan Fortress on the top of the hill. There's the church, which we're gonna go to in a little while here, but it hasn't changed much in terms of, you know, it's overall layout. You can see the big wall that's built around the fortress as well. And right at the base of the terrace steps, they have this pretty amazing sculpture, which is definitely oxidized over time. This is David of David and Goliath. So you can see he's beaten Goliath there. He also needs pants, but that's a different story. This looks like that's the old post office. Beautiful yellow building. And I'm gonna head up these stairs here towards the fortress to check out the most famous attraction here in Helsingborg. I even have a elevator, I guess, if you don't want to climb the stairs, but this seems kind of like the Potemkin steps and Odessa on a smaller scale. So I'll go for it. So I'm a little bit low energy today, folks. I am just wiped. I don't know why. Maybe I'm fighting something off. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's one of those days. You get them as a traveler every now and then. And usually when you start to domesticate a little bit, when you slow down, when you spend more time in the hotel and you're less likely to go outside, that means it's time to go home for a bit. So flying back to Canada tomorrow, that's coincidence, but well-timed. So great views looking down towards the water. You can't really see Denmark though right now. It is a little bit too overcast. I can barely make out the shoreline on the other side. Yeah, it's a pretty beautiful city. This is the ninth largest city in Sweden. So it's quite small by other city standards here in Sweden, but you can see it does have some pretty stellar architecture. I'm gonna continue my way up here. I'm almost at the Karnan Tower. It's right here in front of me. And it's, again, very medieval building. This is almost a thousand years old. Very cool. Wow, more impressive than I thought it would be actually. Looking back down towards Stortorget. But yeah, pretty easy to get here. You just get onto Stortorget and keep walking up the staircase and you're here. So it's basically just a lone tower, as you can see. So when they mean last remnant of the fortress, they really do mean that. I don't even think the wall remains, maybe a little bit of it, but, or at least reconstructed parts. And the tower is 35 meters high and 15 meters wide. So it started in the 1310s and finalized at 1320. So it's 700 years old. So that's pretty amazing. 
And this was one of the most strategic castles of the Danish Empire at the time. So all of this belonged to Denmark during that time period. So this is the last remnant of the old castle of Helsingborg. And the crown of Denmark really relied on this castle as one of its most strategic castles to protect and fortify the city of Helsingborg and also the entry to the Orison. So very cool. So it's only about five kilometers from Denmark to Sweden right here at the narrowest part. So that means there'd be a ton of traffic trying to get through. And that's why these castles were so important. It was easy for them to keep an eye on what was happening on the water and intervene if necessary. So unfortunately, it is kind of closed for the season right now. So I'm not able to go up to the top. It is only open weekends between October 8th and December 18th. So today is a Tuesday, so that's not gonna work. But you can walk all the way to the very top of the tower to check out the view, just as the soldiers who were protecting the Orison would have seen back in the day. So very cool. I would have loved to see that. But that's pretty much what you get when you travel during the winter. It's unpredictable what's going to be open and what's not going to be open. And again, half these things I'm just doing on the fly. I didn't plan on coming to Helsingborg until yesterday, so kind of winging it. Didn't have much time to plan out anything, so just taking it as it comes. But in any case, the views of the tower are pretty incredible and definitely worth checking out if you're in this area. Even as a day trip from Copenhagen, this is a very cool city to at least poke around and see some of the history that's not too far from Copenhagen. So this expansive park that surrounds the Karnan is called Slotshagen. And you can see the colors of fall have definitely dominated. There are so many leaves that have fallen since I started my trip. And this is the thick of fall. I'm basically at the latitude where I live, so home is very similar to this right now. Yeah, it's a pretty low key city, that's for sure. So if you're in Copenhagen, feel free to take this, you know, two day trip, a loop around the Orisund, starting in Copenhagen, take the train north to Elsinore, and then cross using the ferry to Helsingborg, Sweden, and down south on the train to Malmö, and then across the Orisund once again to Copenhagen. So very easy loop around the water body that separates Denmark from Sweden. All right, I'm taking an alternate route down to the city center. So they have some really cool half-timbered homes here. And right ahead of me is St. Mary's Church. This is the back side of it. I'm gonna to go to the front to get some views of the facade. Yeah, a lot of character here in Helsingborg. So due to its being a Germanic language, you can see that Swedish looks an awful lot like German. Just so many leaves. And there is the front of the church. I'm gonna go over there to see if I can get a better vantage point on it. Well, this is a pretty quaint and cute little part of town too with some outdoor eateries here. And that is St. Mary's Church. So pretty impressive old church. Again, this would be about the same year as the castle as it was built, so about 700 years old. I'm not sure who this is. Maybe a nun? So you can see the new meets the old quite a bit here in Helsingborg. This is a 2017 urban art sculpture. Big bundle of knots right at the base of the church. And there's even a little one over here. All right, I think I'm gonna probably get a coffee here somewhere to wake up because I am just sluggish today. So it's definitely a very walkable city. A lot of cafes, antique stores. It's nice to see that they do have some pedestrian streets here in the heart of Helsingborg, but it's not exactly happening. I mean, there's a few people out, but it's definitely a subdued city. It's very small and slow. All right, I'm gonna go get a coffee here at the Brukat Cafe Bar. See how this place is. Prices in Sweden are like 25% less than Denmark. It's actually shocking. 
All right, it is unbelievable just how cheap Sweden is compared to Denmark. This was 36 krona, so that's a really good discount compared to Denmark. All right, I'm heading to the train station from where I will be heading south to Malmo, which is about 45 minutes away. Malmo is a major city here in Sweden, and it directly borders Copenhagen, Denmark, right across the Oresund. So this should be a pretty straightforward little journey down. I figured I would do this instead of going back to Elsinore and then down to Copenhagen. This will allow me to do the full loop around the Oresund. So I'll head to Malmo today. I'll do some sightseeing, continue the sightseeing tomorrow morning, and then I can head straight to the airport in just 23 minutes to Copenhagen Airport to fly back to Canada. So it should work out pretty well. All right, heading into the train station. <laughs> All right, after, oh, maybe close to an hour, actually, like 50 minutes, I arrived here in Malmö, Sweden. Off to the Best Western where I'm staying for the night. Best Westerns are an incredible value here in Sweden. They're like 80 bucks a night Canadian, so, I don't know, 55, 60 bucks US. Really cheap, including breakfast buffet. Really, really affordable here to travel compared to Denmark. So keep that in mind if you're traveling to Scandinavia. Sweden is about a 25% off discount or more. All right, welcome to Malmo. 